On the 18th of July, we as a group sat around a table at Boston Lakes and decided not to travel to the World Feeder Fishing Championships this year in France. There were simply so many restrictions in place, it just wasn't practical for us to travel over there and compete in this annual event. However, by the 5th of August, restrictions had changed and that meant that we as a group decided at the last minute with just four days notice to travel over to France to go and compete in this year's championship. As you can imagine with just four days notice everything was a little bit hectic however I'd made a promise to the team that if they were going to go I would be there with them so with just a few days notice lots of plans changed it meant that we were going to travel over to France to go and compete in the championship and I took the opportunity to document this journey so in this film we're going to be showing you what it's like to compete in an event like this and I'm also going to be interviewing some of the anglers involved in this world-class event and hopefully you're going to enjoy this bit of an insight into what has become a massive event. Now originally I would have been travelling over to this event with fellow squad member Eddie Bryden but unfortunately because there was only four days notice it just wasn't practical for him uh, around his work schedule to get over to France for the championship so that meant I'd be travelling over there on my own. Well that was a really good run down, it's taken just over four hours to get here, this is Portsmouth, I've travelled down from Sheffield, Tuesday afternoon is probably the best time to be tackling the M25 so it's just a really nice steady run. We're here now, all the documentation's been checked, as you can imagine with Covid restrictions, we need NHS Covid passports, uh, sworn, all sorts of documentation but it's all been checked, everything's okay. Just looking forward to getting on board now, get the van locked up, go and find the cabin, have a quick quick shower and then I'm going to go and grab something to eat. Because it was an 8pm crossing it was just a nice steady drive down to Portsmouth and that just meant that I could obviously get a nice meal on the ferry, kick back for an hour or two and then just get a good night's sleep where hopefully I'll be nice and refreshed, ready to hit the ground running as soon as I arrived in France. nice crossing really nice and smooth I managed to get some sleep and a really nice meal I'm currently on the ferry now I'm just about to disembark but before I get on my way I'm just gonna fill up with diesel grab a coffee and what I'm gonna do is because it's Wednesday of training week by the time I get into the area where we're staying and where the match is the lads will already be on the bank for the Wednesday training day so instead of going to the hotel I'm gonna go straight to the venue Ben 
basically the format for a competition like this is that each team has five official training days and that's Monday through to Friday they will be allocated boxes or sections that they can actually fish each day they'll fish a different box each day and the reason for that is just to give them a, a better idea of what the whole match length is like so they train Monday through to Friday competition days are Saturday and Sunday it's currently mid-morning on the Wednesday so the lads are already down there so I'm gonna go straight to the venue now they'll already be fishing and I'll show you the match length and everything and it'll just be great to have a check in with the lads and see some of the other competing nations I arrived at the venue on what is now the third day of training have a first look at the venue it's 19 degrees on the van so it's nice and uh, it's a comfortable temperature it's not too hot and there we go there's the venue this section is obviously not in so there's a, a lad there pleasure fishing and that's the match length going down there you can see all the lads fishing there with the vehicles behind them It looked like it was going to be another red hot day, there was no wind blowing at all so as soon as I checked in with the lads I quickly headed off to get on with my duties. The England lads are going through their routine, as it were. Some lads are catching, some lads aren't catching much at all. Small fish have been a problem. It's a very different day from yesterday. I've been told that yesterday there were more better fish being caught and more of them, but the conditions were very, very different. Bright sunshine today and very little wind. Yesterday it was overcast, there was a bit of a wind blowing. I'm currently behind um, the Hungarians. We've just come down to have a look to see if they're catching, find out what they're doing. The lad behind me is just, just hooked one there. And the other lad next to him just had a really good bream, um, but I think that's the only one he's got. You know, he played it like it was the last fish on earth, but it's definitely a different day today. So uh, it looks like the conditions are going to affect how it's fishing, but it's still early days. Spending that afternoon watching Hungary really gave me an idea and flavour for the venue. It was clear that there were very few bonus fish being caught and it was also evident that there was lots of weed throughout the length as well which as you can imagine um, would result in some lost fish but it would also affect the way that people were actually playing fish. Certainly if they were going to hook any bonus fish as well. It was Thursday and already most of the training week was behind us. It was another stunning morning, quite foggy, a little bit misty, the river looked stunning and it was clear that it was going to be yet another red hot day. England had a task to do, they had to try and find some sort of a pattern. That's what it's all about these training days, you know, regardless of what box you're in, it's a case of trying to spot patterns that's going to help you formulate some sort of a team plan it was great to see Natasha Baroni again there she is and she was there taking photographs and Tom had traveled over from Holland as well to give us a hand on the bank and we've not seen him for three or four years so it was great to see Tom there We 
Well, good morning. It's another, well, it's sunny now. It hasn't been sunny. It's been very, very misty this morning. This is Thursday morning. This would normally be the fourth training day of the week, which just means there's one more day of training left for all of the competing nations. England, um, they've had an interesting, um, an interesting couple of days, completely con contrasting. The first day when they trained, they caught really, really well. The conditions were different, they were overcast, there was a little bit of um, wind on it as well. However, yesterday has just kind of blown a lot of the teams out of the water. It was pretty much flat calm for most people, it was red hot and the fishing really switched off. It wasn't a patch on how it was. However, England um, are still trying to come to some sort of a team plan. Today is gonna to be a mega day. The lads are way up there behind me up in box number four training box number four that's where they are i've just left the lads now they're all setting up now the training session is due to start in 20 minutes now i've come down to the other end of the match length i'm going to be watching the dutch team for the first two hours <clears throat> we think the dutch are going to be quite strong on this venue so that's one of my jobs for today so the first two hours i'm going to be behind their box well, and then obviously while I'm doing that, the England lads are going to be right up there in box four, um, just trying to get to grips with that part of the match length. It's predicted it's going to get hotter. It's currently on about 18 degrees, but they've said it's going to get up to about 25 degrees later on this afternoon. So um, yeah, it's going to be a warm one, but uh, it's all about trying to figure out some tactics. <laughs> The Dutch had been catching some fish, however as the day progressed it seemed to get slower and slower so at the halfway stage I headed back up to the England box to see how the lads were getting on. Well it's 29 degrees now on the van, I've just come in here for Turn the air conditioning down a little bit. Um, I've just come down to um, sort some food out. We'd ordered some food for the last 30 minutes. So uh, it's half past two. We are due to finish in 30 minutes. It's fishing incredibly hard. I've spent most of the day away from the England lads today. I've, I've spent the first two and a half hours right down in box 14, I think it was with the Dutch, just kind of seeing how they were fishing, how they were faring and getting on, trying to sort the venue out. And then I spent about an hour behind the French and, and and they were catching you know the 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 small period of time that i was there behind the french they were catching they were fishing slightly different from the way that we've approached it but they are fishing in a in a completely different area of the river a different sector altogether the french were fishing much longer than uh, than we have been fishing but the area that we've fished today has fished incredibly hard really really difficult small fish but even small fish not in numbers very very few net fish um, so it's it's it looks like it's a completely different venue from what it was the first first day or two so plenty to think about there's about by the time I get back up there there's gonna be about 20 minutes left of, the, of that session so uh, we'll have a quick um, a quick pack away because we've got to get back to the hotel to get showered and get changed um, because it is the parade tonight so um, it's a good 40 minute 45 minute drive from here to our hotel and then back into Rio for the um, for the for the uh, for the parade. So it's going to be a bit of a rush job. So we've just got sandwiches. We can quickly eat those. Get on his way. But there's going to be plenty to to think about. We're going to have another meeting tonight, and that's going to lead us into tomorrow's final training day. When you know we really ought to have some sort of a plan, some sort of a structure, and possibly it will be tomorrow when Dean will name his team. Um, to fish the day one which is the Saturday I don't think he'll name the team tonight he'll probably name the team tomorrow so the lads have got another crack at it tomorrow to try and try and make sure and persuade Dean that they're going to get in the team for day one of this weekend's competition
It had been another long day, however, we got back to the digs, sorted a little bit of bait out, made sure that was okay, and then it was rolling on to Friday for the final day of practice. Well, good morning. It is the morning of um, Friday. It's the final, final training day. It's very, very foggy out there. Um, which, as you can imagine, means it's a little bit cooler. However, we are an hour early. So, um, after sorting all the bait out last night, we had the parade last night, we went through the town. It's a great time to meet everybody as well, see all the other nations, the other anglers and that sort of thing. Um, so that was last night, but we didn't get back to the digs until half past eight last night, which meant we had 30 minutes, um, Dean Barlow, uh, one or two, just had a bit of a meeting until nine o'clock, and then nine o'clock we sat down and had a team meeting whilst we waited for our food to arrive so by the time we'd done all that it was it had gone half past ten so the anglers went off to bed um, and then myself and Will Freeman um, went to the bait room and started sorting all the bait out and everything I've had a bit of a, a pinky hatch in the <laughs> in the van so if you see anything go flying by that's what it is it's a, a <laughs> um, so we were there till, I don't know what time it was, half 11, maybe midnight, um, just looking, trying to make sure the bloodworm was all right. We're really, really struggling to, to keep the bait, especially the bloodworm, in good condition in these conditions. As you can imagine, when you're staying away, you haven't got the kind of facilities that you might have at home, you know, like a, a garage or, or anything like that in the, the digs that we've got. It's actually, it's like a, a conference room. We've actually literally had to hire uh, an extra room in the hotel, which is, it's usually used for conferences so obviously not ideal scenarios for keeping your bait fresh and stuff and obviously um, we're hiring that for the week so you're very conscious about keeping it clean as well and obviously with Bloodworm and Joker you don't want the smell as well we've got you know 15 20 kilos of worms in there it, this is all the kind of thing that people don't talk about when you know when you go abroad um, competing in things like this it's a mammoth task so we got to bed about 12 o'clock I think when we're done but then we were up at just before five because today we are fishing earlier hours they tend to do that on the final training day we usually fish 10 till 3 however today is gonna be 9 until 2 so it's an early start but an earlier finish and that'll just give the lads if they knock off at two o'clock gives them an extra an hour or two on the bank you know just to change all the shot leaders and that sort of thing you know it's um obviously you know most teams as well will name their team and just give the lads a little bit of time to prepare for tomorrow which is first day of competition so today it's like i say it's much cooler today but it is earlier they're expecting it to get to get warm let me take you outside Turn my headlights off and fog lights and all that business. It was a little bit uh, different on the motorway this morning. It's very quiet out here at the moment. But we'll see the river behind me. Go down to the bank. It's still pretty foggy. Very, It's a very still day today, as you can see. No wind or anything, but it is early. We're expecting it to change. I'm surprised how quiet it is. You know, if I pan round now, you're allowed behind the tape two hours before you actually the training session starts all right that's just a, an international rule however i mean it's uh, what time is it now it's just gone it's about 15 minutes into that period and as you can see there's nobody on the bank behind me and if i stop talking you can hear how quiet it is and i'm really surprised at that you know i'm really surprised yes it is earlier but usually, you know, it's a world championship. You'd expect the teams to be here making the most of every hour that they can spend on the bank. Maybe that's a reflection on how it's fishing. Maybe it's a sign that the teams kind of think they know how it's going to fish and what they're going to be doing. So they're just not here. Now, my duty for today is there's a team here. All right, that you can see. I'm not sure what team that is, but if you look 
there where that big gap is that is where France are going to be practicing. Now France have suddenly become the hot favourites now. They've had two incredible days on the venue. Most teams yesterday were kind of... The average weight for a lot of anglers yesterday was probably four kilo. I think five's too high, but four kilo. So that's how hard it's fishing. Obviously they've had some higher weights than that. Skimmers, very, very few bream, but it's mainly all about the skimmers. However, the French yesterday were getting weights of... 10 11 12 kilos um, i spent over an hour with them yesterday behind them and i spotted quite a few things and then dean barlow and steve ringer went down there to have a look as well i think will freeman went down there as well at a different stage just to try and find out what they were doing different you know one of the key things they were doing different was fishing further and longer than everyone else most people are fishing between Anything from about 25 metres to 35 metres, that's the kind of range. However, the French yesterday, they were right down there. On this, There's a big bend here behind me, as you can see. They were on that bend, but they were fishing 50 metres easily. Now, whether that's going to be an issue or not, I don't know. Um, but this is the kind of venue where, by going further, you're actually going into deeper water. The England team, our team meeting, has identified that, obviously. However, we think it's more about the depth rather than the range. And that's something we've talked about a lot on this channel. Um, so that's something that they're going to be experimenting with today. Now, England are, are in the last box. They're in box 15, which you will have seen yesterday. That was the one next to the Dutch, which is where Hungary were. Now, it's a, it's a great box. They've been getting good weights there. So we're expecting them to catch fish, but it's not really obviously that'll be a good confidence boost because it's fishing very very hard and if the lads can catch a few fish today it's going to give them a bit of confidence in in just their ability but hopefully they're going to spot some sort of a pattern that's going to give them some sort of a team plan because at the minute it's a little bit you know it's not very clear at the moment and that's that's rare for the england team on a friday on the last day of training so hopefully they're going to spot something today if you look over my shoulder there they are still not here now what can happen on a friday and i think we might be seeing this today we don't know at this stage is that you get a certainly a home nation or a team that's so confident in their approach that friday is a bit of a waste of time they'll you know they will rock up at some stage i'm sure but they're liable to just do some daft things try stuff out because they're that confident in their approach they've got it nailed and they know that all the other nations have seen their ways over the last few days and so they will be watching them even closer than normal hence that's why i'm here so i've got a feeling that whilst i've got my duty for today to deem uh, uh, learn what we can from from the french i think it's going to be a waste of time personally whatever happens it looks like there's one or two vehicles just turning up now hopefully that's them you can usually spot them because they end up setting a gazebo up where they, they'll be having sandwiches and a glass of wine and, and uh, espresso and that sort of thing. So that's the, just the way the French are. So that's it. I'll try and get a bit of footage if they do start fishing properly. If they're just messing about and not doing anything, then I won't waste your time because it'll just be uh, nonsense what they're going to be doing today. And I think that's what's going to happen, I'll be honest. <laughs> It had been the final day of training and Dean was about to name his team for day one of the competition. However, in such harsh conditions and obviously staying away from home, I took the opportunity to have a, a word with Will Freeman who is basically an expert at looking after bait in these conditions and he was in charge of the bait for the team for the full week. A massive part of international fishing is bait preparation. It's all right having the latest gear and the best anglers, but it's not very good if the bait isn't up to scratch. On these trips over the last few years, Will Freeman, as well as assisting Dean, has also been in charge of the bait, and here he is, the man himself. It's a massive job. Quickly, just sum it up, Will, for us. How and how difficult can it be, but how have you been making sure the bait is in tip-top condition for the lads? Well, the, uh, the, the big problem obviously is temperatures when we come to foreign countries for keeping bait alive. Um, we've had a few issues this week with water quality. Normally we keep the blood in water. We've had problems with the water quality at the hotel, so we've lost a bit of bait. We've had problems with the fridge temperature. The fridge temperature hasn't settled down, so we've lost a lot of bait. So we've ended up riddling the bait twice, twice a day, 
um, and then keeping it in paper and it's been the best best way for us this week you can't really get away with it with this sort of fishing just just preparing it as normal or picking it up on the morning some of these lads might be cast, having to cast bloodworms 60 65 meters so it needs to be tougher than the normal um, the other baits that we're using are more conventional baits like what we'd use back home uh, but the, the big problem is the bait limits so everybody is faced with a, a bait limit both for ground bait and for live bait so in international rules in our competition we have 15 litres of inert bait so ground bait and particles so hemp, corn, lean, soil all of that lot and then two litres of live bait um, that makes the training week very very important for getting the bait right because you can't just have a spare couple of pints of casters in your bag or a spare few bags of ground bait that you can mix up. Everything has to be prepared and presented in the official measures before the start of the match. So um, the lads have done the ground bait. In that 15 litres you've also got to bear in mind that on some venues we might be using two mixers, one for small fish, one for bream. Uh, soils, leams, all of that. Like, it's been a little bit easier on this venue because we haven't needed anything like hemp or corn or anything like that. So the lads have prepared all of that, they've taken that away and we're left with the live bait. So of the two litres, you have to have half a litre of that as joker. Even on the venues that you don't think joker will be relevant, by the time a week has gone by with everybody putting jokers in, the fish want to eat jokers. So half a litre of that as joker. The joker what we've used, on this week has been a Russian style joker which is very inert compared to um, say a Polish or a French joker uh, which has helped with the little the little fish they have to be presented in these half litre measures nobody can have any more than that but there's a lot that we've packed in in there so half a litre is that the other limit is on worms normally we'd have a half litre tub of that of dendrobenus with a few red worms on top on here, it seems that red worms have been quite important to feed, so we've actually split the half litre into two quarters. So we've got quarter a litre of dendrobenus and quarter a litre of neat red worms. So the lads have got those to chop up. That's meant a bit of sorting out. As you can see here, we've got the tray. We've had the, the red worms thinned out last night, then put in a tray. The light forces them to the bottom, so we've ended up with several pints of neat red worms at the bottom. To go with that, you've got the bloodworm hook bait. So these are the official measures. You get one lid and two sides. You get a full compartment or a split compartment. Um, so the full compartment allows you just to fill that up with bloodworm, put the lid on that side. In our situation, we're using the split side because we've got two different bloodworms. We've got a large Polish bloodworm, and then we've got a very small French bloodworm. You can see the size difference there. So there's quite a bit of difference between those two. So we've used the half measure, and we've got those both full up. And then the other litre that we've got left is all our normal conventional baits. So we've got dead pinkies, live pinkies, maggots, and casters in the one litre, and that makes up the two litre limit. So um, we've, that's what we've sorted over the training week, and uh, that's what we've ended up with. So fingers crossed we have a good day today. It's a fantastic job, Will. Obviously, I know a lot of you that's new to this style of fishing, you, you don't get to see things like this. It's just showing you what kind of, you know, how many long, long hours go into this sort of a thing and why Dean um, and the lads need support like this. And, and, and obviously, Will's got a massive amount of experience looking after baits, especially baits like this and fishing for fishing abroad and making sure it's in tip top condition. But he's doing it for all of the lads as well. So um, let's just hope that all the hard work and, and preparation is going to be worth it. So good luck today, Will. We know you're very busy. Thanks for your time and we wish you all the best, mate. All I can say is I'm really pleased it's the last day and I can stop <laughs> <laughs> thanks again mate good luck Cheers. Right, we're here with England feeder team manager Dean Barlow. We're actually out in France. It's the World Championships. This is the final day of training week. How has the week gone so far, Dean? Uh, it's been interesting to say the least. Uh, 
we actually thought the venue was going to get better the more it got fished but it's definitely gone downhill so tactics have been quite difficult to get right uh, so we're we on the last day and we're just fine-tuning what we think is the winning tactics it's been red all week and we've heard rumors that the venue has been fishing hard certainly for some nations it must have been a tough week for the lads so we've got to ask Dean have you selected a team yet yeah it's been very difficult because obviously with us missing out on Monday practice because of traveling uh, we've only had four days where the rest of the guys have had five but I've had to pick a team which is always difficult because I think I've got the six best anglers in the world uh, but unfortunately uh, on Saturday Phil Ringer is going to be sitting out and uh, hopefully the five lads do us proud and uh, get all the points that we need on the first day. Well we know it's going to be a challenge for all the teams but obviously everyone as we know certainly from back home is going to be wishing you all the best so good luck for day one and hopefully you'll get off to a great start. Brilliant, thanks a lot. Really appreciate all the comments and that, that we're getting. Uh, we do read them all and uh, thank you very much. So Dean had decided to leave Phil Ringer out of the competition for day one. So it was a case of heading back to the hotel where we'd just make some final preparations and get a good night's sleep so that we'd be back there on the bank for the first day of competition. Well, good morning everyone. We are here on day one of the 2021 World Feeder Fishing Championships. We're here in France. It's been a very hectic week. We're here with Dean Barlow, England manager. They've just done the draw. How's it looking, Dean? Uh, not too bad. Bit of concern in one of the sections. Uh, uh, what is, there's a, there's a split in one of the sections and there's like a big bend and you've got to be the right side of the bend. And it's, it's typical match fishing. There's, there's going to be good draws and there's going to be uh, a few difficult areas as well. So we have uh, A section, Adam Wakelin. Uh, he's sitting in place where we practiced. Uh, B section, Steve Ringer in a high number, which is what we wanted. Uh, Rob Wotton is in C section in a low number. We needed a high number in that one, but we never know. And then D section, Mick Viles, and E section, Lee Kerr, which is much of a muchness. So, all to play for. It's going to be warm today, isn't it? Yeah, you can see it's a lovely morning and the mist is just clearing. The sun's burning the mist off and it's going to be a hot one, a really hot one. It's looking like it's going to be another exciting day. What we're going to do is we're going to be update you at the halfway stage. Just let you know, we've got bank runners on every section today. So we're going to know roughly where we are and where we're going to be standing. So we're going to update you halfway through the stage. So uh, we'll catch up with you a little bit later on. Good luck for this morning, Dean. Cheers. Wishes luck at home. Thank you. Once again, it was a red hot day. My duties were to run the bank for... Adam Wakelin's section and we knew he was going to be up against it. We heard and we had a feeling that most of the fish were going to get caught down in the early numbers which were down to the left of his section and it took him over an hour to get his first bite and when he did the fish got hung up on the ledge. With a bit of skill and patience, Adam managed to free that fish and that just kind of settled him down into the match. And to be quite honest, from where he was, he actually did brilliant at that part of the section. Go on Waco, well done mate.
Right, um, good evening everyone. Uh, this is about a, as rough and as ready as you can get it. Um, I think this is what they call front line um, behind the scenes video making. Um, I'm in the van as you can see. Dean has just this minute got out of the van. I've just brought him up here into the town of Rio or Rio. Got to give it a quick look around this lovely square. There's the church up there if you can see that. But you're not here to see the, the town centre are you? It's been 33 degrees today on the bank and obviously where we're fishing there is very very little shade if any it's just like being in a desert. Uh, we've just completed day one of the World Championships. We have literally just come straight here from the bank. What basically happens now is Dean has a team meeting now and basically is doing the draw for the anglers sections tomorrow. Now under international matches like this there is a steward sat between each two pegs and what that steward actually does is record the number of fish that the angler either side of him has actually caught and then at the end of every hour or the start of every hour depends how you look at it the steward comes down the official steward or the FIPS official will write the number of fish that's been count on a board behind each angler all right so at the end of every hour somebody like myself can go down the line behind every angler and we will know exactly how many fish have been caught now as you can imagine that's not always a great guide today it's not been too bad because on this fishery or on this river that we're fishing lots of the fish are the same sort of size six ounce but there are lots of tiny fish like that every fish gets count counted so when you see the number of fish that somebody's caught that isn't necessarily a, an accurate guide of you know what sort of weight they've got because it could be fish of all different sizes but that's where your skills come in and your bit of networking comes in where you can go up and down the line speaking to the bank runners and spectators from different nations and find out if it says that somebody's got five fish just ask if you haven't seen that those fish being caught ask them if they're in a foreign language sometimes it's sign language but it's just a case of trying to find out how big those fish are but basically at each hourly stage I could report back to Dean um, and give him an idea of where I thought Adam Wakelin was at the end of each hour. Now that obviously there's sometimes a, a tiny bit of guesswork involved but in order to get that right it, you know you've got to really know what's happening unlike today there have been 15 anglers in that section so I've really had to keep my eye on the ball and what's been caught. It's very tiring especially in 33 degrees heat so it's been a long day uh, as you can probably tell um, we left the hotel just before six this morning to get to here for the draw um, and then we had to go on to the venue so it's been a very very hectic day just like all the other days I mean my section has been pretty good you know I I mean Adam basically what's had happened three of our five anglers have all been at the completely wrong end of the section the key thing for us today was that we've had at least two anglers not catching the first hour Adam was one of them he was last in his section at the end of the first hour with zero fish he hadn't even had a bite and he's obviously pulled that back now and he's absolutely he's done absolutely brilliant he's stuck to the plan he's kept ringing the changes and he's ended up fifth in his section and the only four anglers that have actually beat him and have, have been at the far end pegs two to five down to his left which has been right in the epicenter of where the fish have been caught so he's beat everybody around me he's done fantastic so that's just been a bit of a drawback situation. Now, as regards the team situation, um, Belgium have run out absolute, they've blitzed it. We've seen what they've done. We didn't expect them catching what they've caught. And only yesterday, they were kind of, one or two of their anglers were almost looking for ways to fish it. You know, they didn't seem that confident. But what, what they've done today, they've obviously drawn well. Belgium were at the far end of Adam Wakelin's section as well, right where the fish were. And so Belgium have won the day with a, a ridiculous score of about eight points, which is just unbelievable. So Belgium are winning after day one. Um, in second place, um, we have got Spain, I think it is. I'm just trying to get these right. Spain are in second. Spain have had a great day as well. Completely unexpected. So that's two unexpected teams that are first and second. So we're gonna tweak our plans slightly, but more about that tomorrow. And then third is Holland. Holland have drawn well, uh, but they've obviously caught the fish as well. The Dutch guy, the Holland guy, which was uh, Theo, was to the left of Waco, right in the epicenter. I think it was about peg four, I think. 
which has been right where the fish have caught. So he's done well in, in our section or in, in Waco's session, uh, which is where I've been. So Holland a third and England a fourth. So, you know, I've got to openly admit that yesterday we weren't mega, mega confident in our approach. We haven't had a great week at all, but we had a session yesterday where we tweaked quite a few things. The lads last night over dinner and the meeting that we had in the restaurant, they were confident, you know, that, that at least they'd got a plan, but it was a plan that they knew that they could tweak and change in relation to how it was fishing. You know, it's something that I've talked about a lot on this channel. So England, we're actually in fourth at the moment, all right? And we are four points behind third. So, you know, to put it in context, we are four points behind a medal, all right? And four points you can find anywhere. You know, some of the sections have been so tight, literally 30, 40, 50, 60 grams has separated anglers, you know? And Waco, I mean, Waco's had three one pound fish, which is 500 grams. 500 grams in his section has been about three points. So that's how tight it is, that's how close it is. But as we know, as we all know, this is a two day competition. As Tom Pickering always said, it's only halfway. We've got to do it all over again tomorrow and anything can happen. What we'll see tomorrow is, well, have Belgium got a magic, um, or have they got it sorted? We'll find out tomorrow. But when it's fishing as hard as this, there have been some really low weights and any team can blank out at any moment. So um, that's basically it. I'm going to have to pick Dean up now. We're going to head it's 50 minutes from here back to the hotel. We're going to go and sort the bait out, make sure the bait's okay, see how much blood worm and joker we've got left for tomorrow. And then we're going to get showered and changed, go and have a meal and then have a meeting and see how we're going to tweak the plan. It had been a very tough day, however Belgium had literally walked away with it on just nine points, an incredible performance. And they'd obviously got the venue sorted. Spain were in second place with 17 points and then the Netherlands were on 27 points in the bronze medal position. But to hear how the lads have gone on, let's hear from Dean Barlow. Well then Dean, we knew it was going to be a test. We've been, uh, as you know, we've been here a few days. We've We've tried all sorts out, trying to work this venue out. It's got hotter and hotter. There hasn't been any wind, but it's been day one today of the 2021 World Feeder Fishing Championships. So come on, Dean, how have the lads gone on? Uh, we've scored 31 penalty points. Adam Wakelin, uh, five points. Steve Ringer, six. Rob Hutton, six. Mick Viles, five. And Lee Kerry, nine. So 31 total. Uh, Belgium have absolutely amazing score nine points and then uh, surprising uh, Spain uh, on 17 and then uh, Holland uh, 20 27 and then you've got uh, the favorites uh, France 33 and uh, Hungary 36 so very very difficult day and there's very very fine lines between uh, between the weights, a fish here and a fish there is always uh, is always going to make a difference. But uh, we're still in the mix. We're still in the mix. Meddling is still possible. Uh, and tomorrow uh, we we'll, we fight again. How was the draw generally, Dean? How were the lads? You know, would you say it was a favourable draw today on, in hindsight? Uh, there's a couple of areas that you want to be. Uh, obviously, A1, A2, A3, A4 all good pegs in Adam's section and he was peg 10 uh, and then we had Lee Carey on E4 and E12 was first in the section E10, E9 so you can see where it's going but it's, it's, it's one of those things isn't it uh, you can't always blame the draw, you've still got to catch the fish so uh, fair play to those guys but like I say we're still in the mix and uh, we'll go again tomorrow harder and stronger we know you've just had quite an intense meeting, as always, just like you have done every night with the team. We've got to ask this, and we know you won't give away any details, but yeah. will you be tweaking anything for tomorrow? Yeah, of course we'll, yeah. Uh, we've, we've figured out the... Got a couple of little things wrong, uh, which we're going to put right tomorrow. Uh, it, it, it just shows you how the venue uh, is behaving, because the out-and-out -out favourites, the, the people, the team, team France was just in practice absolutely smashing it and they've had 33 points that more or less sums up how the venue has changed 
over the the last four days every day it's got hotter and hotter and hotter and today it's 30, it's been 34 degrees on the bank it's like but like i say we're give it another really good go tomorrow and uh like i say the podium's still in sight well you've had loads and loads of messages so thanks to everybody back home wishing you well and obviously we'll all be rooting for you hoping you're going to just get that draw that's going to give your lads a chance yeah we're always hoping we never turn down a never turn down a good draw but let's hope we we've, we're gonna change the tactics slightly and hopefully uh the the weights will slightly be on our side than uh, than our competitors all right. Well, thanks, Dean. Really appreciate your time. We know you're busy and we look forward to seeing you in the morning when you can tell us all about the draw. Good Cheers. luck. Thanks a lot. Well, we're here with Steve Ringer. Um, Steve, we know it's been red hot. We know it's been a long week. How how really has, has the practice gone this week? Practice has been tough, to be honest. We missed, obviously, day one uh, through different circumstances, obviously, but we wanted to be here. So we always accepted that day one we probably wouldn't get here in time to fish and that happened but we've had a difficult week the venue's changed a lot the fishing has gone downhill as in it's got worse that makes it harder to work the tactics out to work tactics out you need to be able to catch fish but when the fishing's getting harder and you haven't got your tactics sorted it's always that little bit trickier and I think it's proved a little bit in today's result it's perfect timing mean, you've just fished day one of the 2021 World Feeder Fishing Championship you now have hindsight Tell us how your practice is kind of compared to how it's fished today. Practice has been difficult, as I've just said. We just had that little, on the last day, on Friday, we just felt we found a little, few little things concerning depth and how to feed the swim. One more day would have been perfect. I'll be brutally honest there. But we went in today, a little bit of a plan. We've gone very positive, but the venue hasn't responded as we saw. As, as we sort of expected it to. I think the French resort is a brilliant example of that. They've been outstanding a week, and then we've actually ended up beating them on the day, which looked impossible like two days ago. So plan-wise, we're tweaking it, obviously, for day two. Things can be improved, but we're not saying we've been a little bit unlucky. Two more fish on second, Rob's lost a mullet. Uh, a couple of other people, Lee's had a Xander, which was like 1.5 centimetres too small. So things haven't quite gone our way, but there's a chance of a medal, and that's what we're going for tomorrow. You've got loads of fans back home, and all over the world really, especially over Europe as well. Preston have backed the journey of the England feeder team throughout since its inception all those years ago. We've got to ask you, does this venue compare to any other venue that you've fished? Venue-wise, it's like nothing. This is one of the problems I think we've got a little bit. Obviously, because of COVID, we haven't been able to come abroad. We haven't been able to practice. Normally, we'd come out the month, a month before and have a look at the venue. So we've come. We haven't come blind because we came two years ago. Two years is a long time, and we need to do more fishing on the continent. Hopefully, going forward, travel will become easier. It's just so different to back home. You know, what I mean, we're fishing with baits that you just don't use back home, like soils, leams. We just don't do enough of that fishing. But going forward, that's something we're really keen to put right, and I'm pretty sure the team will say the same result might not be great on day one but day two still to come and we've learned an awful lot well we're here with mick viles mick you've fished multiple world championships now we know that preston innovations has followed the journey all the way ever since the world championships for feeder fishing started we've got to ask you how does this venue compare to any of the others that you've fished is it unique or is it similar to any of the others that the followers might have seen before? Well, I think every uh, venue is unique, Jamie, but there's one thing that uh, does seem to be common, which is after five days of training and, uh, you know, sometimes 150 anglers crashing baiting every day and catching fish, taking them back. There's some similarities in the fact that it seems to have, you know, got harder and harder as the week's gone on, and today's proved that. Um, two kilos, four unders, one my section. Uh, I have to say, guy to the left, uh, uh, fantastic job on his section and I've had one kilo 230 and um, that's been fifth so it just goes to show how tough that is so yeah that's 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 world championships venues just for the followers um, obviously you know there aren't many people that get the opportunity to come to a venue like this we know it's not all about the fishing for anybody that's been involved in this kind of scene the fishing is it's a small percentage of it how how are you finding kind of tackling the conditions it's been very very warm how are you you know how are you managing to manage your bait yourself 
And how are you managing to keep going on so, so many long days in mm-hmm. such a hot climate? Well, we're just about off to the room to uh, get an early night, 9.27, and uh, that's really, really important. Plenty of water, you've got to eat well, you've got to rest well, and, um, you know, as you said, managing your bait, you've got to keep in the shade, and we have some great... We wear white clothing that keeps us cool, and... Um, and the most important thing is to remember that that's all going off while you're fishing and you're super focused for five hours but you've got to remember to drink plenty of water and um, look after yourself it's really really important um, you know no fizzy pops not too much sugar lots of water and don't forget to replace your salt when you have your chips <laughs> <laughs> i've got to ask you this mick because it's something we spoke about briefly and, it, and it's <clears throat> something that i learned a while ago from one of your um one of your former teammates and that is you're fishing for skimmers, you're fishing for bream. How do the fish in a country like this within Europe, how does targeting them differ from how people might target them in the UK? It- yeah, well, I mean, obviously, everybody's bream fishing, they fill it in at the start and they wait for them to rock up, you get a few liners and then you, you have a last, you know, a good two hours. Um, you pick fish off a bit uh, more here and, you, you know, obviously, Bloodworm and Joker is the big difference. And um, and that makes a massive, massive influence because once they've had five days of training where people have been putting half a litre of joker in every day, they get a taste for that. And um, and, and ordinarily, you know, you'll find that the, the fish want to get on that joker, but on here, it's, it's really sunny, it's really flat, it's really clear. I think it's a lot clearer than we realise. Uh, you know, we're fishing in sort of 15 to 18 foot uh, in the deepest parts and the fish are bobbing down grabbing the bit of joker and the back up and you, you don't get liners you know you might get an odd plink as it's passing its way down your line <clears throat> but they're not staying down on the bottom so you're almost picking them off um you know one at a time you've got to fish fish for each one to take one bream as it comes and, and then fish for the next you've got your hook box there we've got to ask you is that have you done your prep for tonight or are you about to go off um, and do the prep for well, it's tonight it's called topping up so obviously you do loads and loads of prep before you come uh, you fill four or five of these by the time friday night comes you've got one because you've usually got it down to a couple of hooks uh, i've got some nice n20s in here and some n30s and um i'm just going to go back and top up what i've used today so that i'm ready for tomorrow we know it's been a very long day, it's been very hot, and we know you've eaten and you're off to bed. So thanks very much for your time, Mick. You're we welcome, really Jamie. appreciate it, and uh, and good luck for tomorrow, mate. Cheers. Well, we're here with Rob Wotton. It's the end of day one of the 2021 World Feeder Fishing Championships. It's been red hot, it's been a test for everybody. But come on, Rob, how's it gone today? Well, obviously, we're lying in fourth place, 31 points. Me, personally, sixth in my section. I've been in C section. Maybe at the wrong end, there's some better pegs at towards the back end of the section, the top end of the section, but I'd have liked to have had a better result, if I'm honest, but we've got tomorrow to come. We feel like we've learned quite a bit today, and we're hoping for a big charge on day two. We know the viewers love anything that's kind of behind the scenes, as you know, Rob, more than I do. Travelling to events like this, the actual fishing is only a tiny percentage of the whole experience. You know, it's the travelling over here, managing yourself, managing the bait and everything. What I'd like to ask you, Rob, is something that we talked about before, and that is, what's it like suddenly having to fish Bloodworm and Joker in the middle of summer when we don't really fish with it that much back home, do we? Yeah, I'd, I, me personally, I hate the excuse of we don't do this style of fishing enough. You know, we should be getting out there, and we've made it our, our task in recent years, when we've been allowed to, to get into Europe, to go and fish these these style of events. You know, we spend a lot of time traveling over Europe, going to big international events whenever possible. But obviously COVID is like, it's scuppered that. So we've not been able to get, get out as much as we want. Even so, we've still got all the gear. We still do quite a bit of, bit of it. We make sure we're up to speed with it. Like you say, can be a bit of a shock though. And obviously, I just think, you know, with the venue, it's been red hot. Keeping the bait has been really, really difficult. You've had to have tip top bait. You've got to say massive thanks to Will Freeman. We've had him looking after the bait. Obviously, all the lads have chipped in as well because it's been a late notice thing. We've all made an effort to make sure all the worms sorted, all the jokers sorted. And we've had some really good bait for this week. So, just keeping the bait is really difficult. The next and final topic that we're dying to ask you, Rob, is that. As we all know, probably three weeks ago, we all sat around a table one Sunday evening and we made the decision not to come to France. Fast forward, not many days. You literally gave yourself about five or six days notice. 
you suddenly decided to come to France. How did you find preparing for such a big event on such short notice? Um, right, I was preparing for like a couple of months beforehand. So I'd already got a load of hooks tied, already got rods all made up. And we've been really fortunate that this style of fishing is reasonably similar, kit-wise anyway, not the way that the fish feed, but kit-wise to the sort of fishing that we do at home. So we've all got the gear. We all do a lot of this style of fishing at home. And obviously, individually, I've been preparing anyway. And everyone in the team has got masses of hooks, masses of feeders. Like I say, we fish a lot of these sort of events in Europe. So we've built up like anyone that's seen my stack of feeders. That's what everyone here has got. They've got a massive amount of feeders. So we've got all, we've got all the gear. It was the behind the scenes stuff that was going to be the issue, you know, ordering the ground bait, getting the ground bait delivered to the venue, ordering the blue worm and joker, making sure we've got worms, casters, maggots, pinkies, making sure we're getting the right accommodation with a room for bait, all that behind the scenes stuff, that was going to be the tricky stuff, you know, kit wise, I'd like to think we were all pretty sorted if I'm honest. Well Rob, we know you're very busy, you're probably very tired, it's been a tiring day, you are selected to fish again tomorrow. You can probably hear the crickets behind us, which is signalling what time of night it is. So we're going to let you go and get some rest. So thanks for your time, Rob. And obviously we wish you all the best for tomorrow. Nice one. Day two of the competition was soon upon us. And here is footage of Dean telling the lads what pegs they've drawn. They already knew last night what sections they actually were going to be in, but Dean's done the draw today, so... Eight section, Stephen. Eight, ten. Same That's where Waco was yesterday. At least we know there's a yeah. few fish there. You could have drawn the same peg twice, two times. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Holland have drawn eight, two, which that's yeah. their end peg. Uh, next peg to Belgium. Right. He's on nine. And then Sweden is on 11. Okay, so same peg as at least you know there's some fish yeah. there with the changes. Yeah, it could be good. B2, one section was one off B1 yesterday. Ooh. So yeah, you've got Austria one. next peg, yeah, doing well. and Italy <laughs> the other side, so that's not bad. Bit of a nightmare in C because we drew an absolute flyer in C, C11, which is on that bend, but then realised that they haven't put peg one in the bag. So we came back and we've got C6. <laughs> but to be fair, that was on the end of where I think the Lithuanian was there and he had two or three proper fish. So that's that. Then we've got D, D1. Next to the dike. Yeah. And one after the dike. One that's after the dike. Perfect. Which, that's not our which is, either, is it? No. no. And that's uh, that's like in the end of C section, which is the best end yeah, of that yeah, section. Before that dike. Yeah. So after you, the dike. You've got you just, this, this, this side of the dike. Yeah, this side yeah, of yeah. this yeah. side yeah. of the dike, and I think there was more. Mate, he was in that section. There was more fish that end than yeah, the other yeah, end. That was better end. And then uh, E15 and Peggy in the match. You've done, oh, yeah. <laughs> You've done quite well there, DJ. <laughs> <laughs> Can you so, draw for me back home? T15. Well, this is day two of the 2021 World Feeder Fishing Championships. We are in France. This is C section right at the beginning. It's a very, very different day from how it has been throughout this week. It's, it's been red hot, flat, calm conditions all week. The fishing's been incredibly difficult. But as you can see today, it's a completely different ball game. As we pan round, we've got Lee Kerry there just sticking up. He's actually drawn Preg C6. There's Dean Barlow, England manager. Um, they've only been in the box about 30 minutes now, so Lee's just getting set up. But as you can see, we've got cloud cover today. We've got quite a bit of fog, a bit of mist, as you can see, on the river. And there's a bit of a wind blowing as well. It's a really chilly, chilly wind. Um, everyone's been in their shorts and t-shirts all week. However, today those lads are feeling the chill. As I speak, the sun is just trying to break through. So we are expecting the conditions to change. But at the moment, we've got quite a bit of cloud cover, which is the first that we've had all week. So it's going to be interesting to see how that affects things. This is C section. B section is right down there. And then a section and as we pan around this is a big bend in the river and as we go around to the right 
that goes around to D section on D1 is the angler that I'm going to be spending today with again just like I did yesterday that's Adam Wakely and his drum peg D1 just around that corner just after the split or there's a little bit of a dike that comes in there's the refreshments tent which is where we're heading in a moment for a coffee while the lads just get settled into the box and everything and have a bit of a chat with the bank runners hand out the boards and just talk about the approach for today and then as you get further down there you've then got E section which is the end and that's where Mick Viles has drawn down there he's actually drawn the end peg in that zone today so we're hoping he's going to have a good day we're currently lining fourth we are I don't I'm just I think it's three or four points behind third so we're four points behind a medal position at the moment um, the team in front of us is Holland but like I said the conditions are completely different as you can see the river's looking it's got a chop on it you know there's a bit of a wind on it certainly on this bit anyway because there's a big bend in the river there are um, different conditions in different sections where Adam Wakeling was yesterday on section A well he was in section A around the corner there the wind was um, hitting the river completely different from how it was here and likewise further down the river to our right so it depends on the section that you've drawn which could affect how much ripple there is going to be on the water but we are in France and we know that fishing in Europe generally <laughs> when we compare it to the conditions that we would normally favor back home um, it can be different on the continent you know these fish are used to sunshine we are in um, a, quite a northern part of france to be fair however there are some areas in europe where they do actually favor those hot calm conditions but we don't think this is one of them so it's going to be really interesting to see how these conditions are going to affect the fishing how it's going to affect the team's tactics the tactics of different nations there are 15 different teams here like I say England are lying in fourth they have we have had a, we had a meeting last night we tweaked the plans slightly from day one and um, from the things that we saw and what we learned from yesterday's day one of competition so it's gonna be interesting to see how those little tweaks are gonna make a difference but as ever we have got presence on every section we have got bank runners on every section we're obviously going to keep be keeping their eyes and ears open and so if we do have to change tactics in any way or tweak anything or make any changes then we will be getting information from the bank that's going to allow us to do that dean's just been joined by will freeman he's been he's done a fantastic job looking after the bait you know preparing bait for all the anglers is a mammoth task anyway but certainly in the conditions that we've had this week and certainly when you're dealing with bloodworm and joker it's a mega task he's done a fantastic job and i'm i know that he's quite happy it's the last day of competition so he doesn't have to do it anymore because i know he's tired we were up at five o'clock this morning again um, and then straight into the bait room he was there getting the bait ready he was up late last night getting it ready as well for the lads so um we know the bait is in tip-top condition we think the tactics are right the draw is looking favorable so we're obviously hoping that it's all going to come together and we're going to gain quite a bit of ground on those teams in front of us but um, at the moment now everything is really in the hands of the lads actually in the boxes so we're going to go grab a coffee now and i'll update you later and let you know how it's going but um yeah it's going to be a very very interesting five hours as soon as the match starts well, we're here with Lee Kerry. He is in C section today, and you know, we've already discussed the conditions. It's been red hot, flat, calm, bright blue skies all week. However, at the moment, obviously it might change, but at the moment, the conditions look very different. What do you reckon, Lee? Um, yeah, different, Jamie. We're fishing a bit longer here on these pegs, uh, on the on the bend. Uh, it's, it's wind's supposed to get up across me, English style. So. I'm, I'm quite excited about it. I, I mean, I wish it had been this weather all week because it's made such a massive effect on what otherwise would be an amazing venue. But yeah, we've got a, we've got a plan, rough plan as always, because you need to adapt. Um, and we'll just have to see how it goes. I mean, we're, we're in the fight and that's more than I think you could ever ask for after day one. We're in the fight, let's go and, uh, and see what we can do. As an angler who's very experienced fishing abroad on the continent in Europe and that sort of thing, we've often talked about conditions in Europe. Sometimes we see fish feeding in conditions where, you know, back home, they wouldn't be quite so favourable. Mm. Um, obviously, I know you've seen those scenarios. 
Will these conditions change the way that you're going to approach the peg, or are you just going to go with what you discussed in the team meeting last night? Yeah, no, we're we're going to go with what we discussed. Um, we're not because we were never going to we were never going to ease off. We were never going to take a foot off the gas. Got to give ourselves a chance today. So that's what we're going to do. We've got everything in place yeah maybe if it had been rough like this all week we might or really rough i mean it's not rough at the moment but if it if it you know the wind is forecast to get up it, it might suit us it might suit our style and when you get two contrasting days of a world championships the scores might not be the same as they were so for me it's really exciting uh hopefully we can get some bites i've got to tell you when you sat on your box in a in any international match and the fishing's hard it's not the most enjoyable thing in the world because every time the fish get, you know, you, you get a bite or not, it matters. So it's nice to be part of that experience and I can't wait for today. We're obviously hoping that the team draw is going to give you lads a chance. That's what it is. And then obviously no pressure, but the, you know, it's up to you guys then. We've got to ask you on a personal note, Lee, from somebody who's very experienced at fishing abroad in these kind of competitions, it is the last day of competition. You've been here all week. It's been a very tiring week. How have you been coping with it so far? Are you tired or are you just buzzing on adrenaline? Um, What's it like? I think there's some adrenaline still going. I am I am absolutely exhausted. <laughs> you go to bed on a night, I can't even explain. After two or three days in the heat, when you're out all day, uh, your eyes hurt. It's, it's really tiring. I wouldn't change it for the world. It's absolutely fantastic. We've got a ferry journey home during the day tomorrow and I've booked a cabin for a day long sleep. Um, but no, I'm absolutely, I'm loving it. I'm ready for today. I feel really relaxed today. Um, I felt relaxed all week. We've got a great camp, we've got a great team. And uh, I just hope that, you know, we can we can push on today and fight for a medal. That's that's really what I'm up for. Well, there's about 20, 30 minutes, something like that, to pre-baiting, so we're going to leave you alone now. We know you're very busy. Thanks for your time, Lee. We're obviously rooting for you. We've had loads of um, best wishes messages, so thanks to everybody for them. So yeah, thanks for yeah. your time, mate. Huge, huge thanks, Jamie, to everybody back home, and huge thanks to all the team on the bank. Uh, you know, as anglers, when you're here, the appreciation we have for the support and the support here is massive so thank you everybody brilliant nice one lean good luck mate cheers mate b section this is rob button just got a fish this is his third fish he's fishing very hard phil ringers with him at the moment he's fishing very hard here yeah, that's his third fish we've been fishing 30 minutes there's nothing caught to his left. The next two pegs haven't caught, but then the Frank, the Dutchman, um, is three pegs long. He's caught th uh, five fish now. So it's fishing hard in these early stages. As it turned out, the venue just fished even harder. It was unbelievable how few fish were actually being caught. But by sticking to the plan, Rob caught a few fish steadily. But where he was, he did absolutely brilliant from the area where he was. There was more fish caught further up to the right in the higher numbers of his section. But as you can imagine, when you've got a team plan to stick to, it's a case of catching what you can from the peg that you've actually drawn. Rob just ticks over quite nicely, just catching the odd fish, and he was very accurate with his, with his weight. And that just meant that I could position him in the section correctly. We had him in second place for most of the second half of the match. However, a late fish by Frank, the Dutch angler to his right, sadly knocked him into third position. So he ended up third, but he did fantastic from where he was, but sadly it just wasn't quite enough for the team. The lads had suffered one or two heavy scores. And it was quite clear that the Belgians had got it sorted. So France had taken third with 53 points. Obviously they were really pleased to get a medal on home soil. But as we all know, leading through training week, they were the hot favourites. So maybe their plan or maybe their draw didn't quite go to plan. In second place was Spain with 42 points. They'd done brilliantly. No one really saw that one coming. But the Belgians were really right out there on 36 points. They'd obviously got the plan right. 
they'd obviously drawn pegs that helped them to win it but it also means that they executed the plan well as well and since then we actually spoke to the Belgians and we found out how they fished it and it really was quite a simple approach but whatever the tactics the key is they were the new world champions Straight after the ceremony, we managed to get a few minutes with England manager Dean Barlow. Right, we are here with England feeder team manager Dean Barlow. It has just been the second day of competition for the 2021 World Feeder Fishing Championships in France. You have been following us and this is the first update um, after the match. So, come on Dean, how has day two gone for England? Not as good as we expected. Uh, it's been a very, very technical venue, and and on heart, we 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 we, we got it quite wrong. To be fair, uh, doesn't help the fact that Blood Worm and Joker has been a massive part of this match, uh, feeding the ground baits, and we haven't put a, a Blood Worm on the hook for over four years. Uh, but saying that, and. We, 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 we got it we got it a bit wrong and I take full responsibility for that but moving forward uh, it just goes to show that on the continent they do this fishing all the time and they are getting better and better and better and we need to do more of this fishing we've, we've, we've all spoke after the match we've had a, a, a meeting and we, to up our game we've got, a, we've got to start mixing with these guys on the continent to carry on to get to the standards that uh, we need to get to. Every team's getting better and better each year and to carry on being one of the best, we're gonna to have to, to mix it on the continent a bit more. So yeah, that's fair play, fair play to the guys, fair play to Belgium, double gold. That mean when you win double gold, like we did in Inner Sky, it means you've got the tactics absolutely spot on. Uh, Spain as well, never medaled before. They got the tactics right and then you look at Holland out of the medals, you've got Hungary out of the medals, so it, it was a difficult venue. Um, did we have the best preparation? Not really, uh, with all the restrictions and everything, but it's not an excuse, we just got it wrong. I'm just trying to be dead honest about it, and we're absolutely gutted, but we gave it our best, and we need to change a few things to uh, keep up to the pace of uh, continental fishing. Well, we just had the uh, the ceremony, all the presentation for the medals and everything. I know you're going to go and spend an hour or so with the lads now, go and get something to eat. Um, can we just quickly ask you, Dean, obviously, you know, how, how are the lads? Are they all OK? Are they staying positive? How are they? Oh, well, gutter. Absolutely gutter. But one thing about this team of lads, not just the, the fishermen, Will, myself, and even yourself, Jamie, we're determined to, to put the, the wrongs right and there's going to be some hard work and uh, all the lads are, are up for it so as a group we take a little bit of time off we, we analyze what's gone off and we will put it right and that's all we can do and i still believe i've got the best anglers in the world uh, but we just need to sharpen our sharpen our tactics on continental fishing so but we're all up for the challenge and when you see when you see uh, the the champions with their gold medals around the neck or even any medal you you want to put the wrongs right and it starts tomorrow it starts tomorrow we 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 get home and we analyze it and then put it right it's been an incredibly long week dean very tiring um, it's been hot it's just been non-stop right the way through right from when you got here and you even came here on short notice so even before you got here everything was intense as well so it's been yeah, it's been an incredible two weeks really yeah, definitely it's like there's, there's no excuses because we, we got it wrong and i take full responsibility for that but as a group we gather our thoughts and we we, we go we go again and uh, watch out we're, we're gonna be we're gonna be back pretty soon
Thanks for that, Dean. Thank you for so no problem, being so honest about how today's gone. Can I just say uh, thank you to everyone who's been tuning in and watching and that. Uh, I want to give a massive, massive thanks to yourself, Jamie, uh, and to Will, who I know everybody's seen the where he does the bait and everything, but Will gets up at half past four every morning to make sure that everybody has got the pristine bait and everybody is got everything spot on. He, without Will, none of the team would be anything. So I just want to say thank you for that. Yeah. You'll kill me for, for doing that on camera, but I just <laughs> wanted to personal thanks. Everybody at home, thanks for watching. Sorry we, we couldn't do it, but that's international fishing. Thanks for that, Dean. We're going to go and let you go now, spend an hour with the lads just to unwind a little bit. We know that when you get back to the hotel tonight, before you go to bed, you've got to pack the van and everything up ready for a very early start tomorrow. So thanks for taking the time out, Dean. Really appreciate it, and we obviously all hope you have a safe journey home. Cheers, thank you. It was clear to see the disappointment in Dean's face and as you can imagine all the lads took the result quite hard. It was obvious that some things need to change, you know, fishing in Europe is very different from how we normally fish here in the UK and certainly when we start talking about bloodworm and joker fishing, it's such a rare occurrence here in England that we perhaps need to be fishing with it a little bit more. Straight after the opening ceremony we went off to the banquet and that's a great opportunity for all the teams to have a really nice meal together and obviously say our goodbyes before we head off back to our respective nations. But one thing that often gets overlooked and one that a lot of people don't know about is the amount of respect that the teams have in this event for each other.